lift your voice and give glory to God this morning. Give him thanks for these awesome testimonies. They are the doings of the Lord and they are marvelous in our eyes. Let's give him the praise. Let's give him the glory. Let's give him the honor and the adoration. Bless the name of the Most High is worthy of praise. Bless the name of the Most High is worthy of glory. Father, we say thank you. We bless your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honor. And all adoration belongs to you. Father, we say thank you. And now begin to ask him to speak to you this morning. I have come here for an encounter with you, Lord. Speak directly to me today by your word. Speak directly today to me by your word. I have come to hear from you today. Let your word come in my direction. Speak to me this morning with precision. I open my heart to receive from you. I open my ears to hear from you. I open my spirit to be directed by you. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the blessing of your presence. We thank you for the answers that you have given to all of our prayers. For it, Lord, we give you all the glory. Father, we are before you again this morning and we are ready to receive your word. We ask that you will speak to us again and by your word let every one of us be transformed. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please you may be seated in his presence. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. That shall be your experience in Jesus' name. In John chapter 16 and verse 24, Jesus made this very striking statement. He said, Hitherto you have asked me nothing in my name. He said, Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. In that statement, Jesus reveals something very unique. The fact that for anyone to get much out of the prayer altar, you must not just come speaking, but come with specifics. On the altar of prayer, generalized prayers do not count much. Just coming without a specific outcome in heart will produce efforts that do not bring results. According to scriptures, every time a person comes with a generalized prayer, the response of Jesus is, what exactly do you want? In Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, we find blind Bartimaeus hearing that Jesus was passing by. And the Bible says that he began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Now, if you remember what we saw earlier in John 16, 24, he said, you have asked nothing in my name. It's not that they were not using his name, but they were not using it for anything specific. In the same vein, you find Bartimaeus there crying out, Jesus, that's his name. Son of David, he still responds to that even in heaven. Have mercy on me. In what area? The Bible said, Jesus turned back and said to him, what is it that you want? God does not respond to your situation. He responds to your request. Recognize that you must never approach the altar of prayer assuming that God will respond to what he sees. He will respond to what you say. The altar of prayer, therefore, must be an altar of clear and specific demands. In James chapter 4, verse 2, the Bible says, You have not because you ask not. In other words, what you do not receive is because you did not request. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and verse 8, 
The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 8 says, everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. So God makes it very clear that the specifics of your demand determine the delivery that you and I take hold of. What that means, therefore, is that you must not be religious on the altar of prayer, but you must be specific with your request. And that's why all through this week, we are going to be looking at this line of exhortation that is captioned, engaging the wonders of specific demands on our prayer altar. Engaging the wonders of specific demands on our prayer altar. And we're going to look at two case studies this morning. The first one is from Anna. The Bible shows us the experience of Anna in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 13 down to verse 19. We are told there concerning Anna that she spake in her heart unto the Lord. Her voice was not even physically heard, even though her lips were moving. And the Bible tells us there that this woman was in such a state of connectivity with heaven that Eli passing by looked at her and said, put away your wine from you. He thought she was drunk. And she said, no, I'm not a daughter of Belial. I'm just a woman of a sorrowful spirit that is pouring out her soul before the Lord. But what was Anna asking specifically? She told the Lord in very clear terms, Give unto me a man child. Give unto me a man child. And in accordance with her specific demand, God gave her her Samuel. You see, you must come to understand that you don't assume your way to answers. You specify your way to answers. Don't make assumptions. God called you and I to make intercessions. And intercessions are specific demands. Specific demands. The second case study we have is the case study of Solomon. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3 down to verse 12, we are told how God came down and said to Solomon, ask me what you want me to do. And Solomon said, Lord, give me an understanding heart for who is it that will be able to rule this your people? Without such a heart. And the Bible said the speech pleased the Lord. And God said I will give you wisdom above all others. You will be far wiser than everyone that is in your generation. And we are told in 1 Kings chapter 4. Verse 29 to 34. In 1 Kings 3 we see the prayer. In 1 Kings 4 we see the clarity of the answer. It says and God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding what? Exceeding much. You see, God has more than enough of whatever you are requesting. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 5, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. So when we ask of God, he does not give stingily. He gives liberally. And that's why the Bible tells us concerning Solomon, it said God gave Solomon wisdom and God gave Solomon understanding how much, exceeding much. And he began to describe the dimension. He says, a largeness of heart, how large as the sand that is on the seashore. A continuous expanse. The wisdom was without limit. And then the Bible begins to tell us how it compared and how it excelled all the wisdom of his day and his age. He made a request and God gave him an answer. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Take note of this. The ability of God is beyond our ability to request. 
But the response of God is according to the specifics of our request. The ability of God is beyond our ability to request. But the response of God is according to the specifics of our request. God will not answer what you don't ask. It is what you ask that ultimately determines what God answers. I want us to understand, therefore, that we are dealing with a God that knows no impossibility. We are dealing with a God that knows no difficulty. We are dealing with a God that cheaply delivers anything anyone can imagine. What he's saying to you and to me is ask in specific terms and God will deliver in dynamic terms. I see God delivering supernaturally on your behalf in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We must therefore continue to engage the hand of the God of increase towards the actualization of the minimum double of the highest annual average Sunday attendance in this church since inception this year. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 6, the Bible tells us there very clearly, it says, Paul planted, Apollos watered, but God gave what? The increase. So as we stand in prayer, we must be expectant, recognizing that our God is not only able but willing to deliver whatever we request. So as we ask of him, particularly concerning the growth and the advancement of the church, you and I can expect to see him multiply his church supernaturally. And that shall be our experience in the name of the Lord Jesus. What God is saying to you and to me is very simple. If we can be specific, God is set to deliver. If we can be specific, God is set to deliver. Everywhere you see the force of prayer deployed effectively, it must be engaged specifically. Everywhere you see it deployed effectively, it must be engaged specifically. So no trial and error. We are not talking about just having a prayer point. We are talking about sustaining a prayer focus. Staying on a matter. Pressing to the point of answers. Not just offering trial and error. But pushing with specific demands. Expecting a unique outcome from every subject presented. If you don't know what the answer you are looking for looks like, then you will not recognize it even if it comes. So you and I must be specific. The Bible says whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and then you shall have them. So there must be a specific desire that precedes the demand and then there will be a unique delivery. That will be somebody's experience here. As we enter into this last week, in this season of prayer and fasting, therefore, what God is saying to you and to me is be specific. Everyone that asketh specifically receives. Everyone that seeks specifically will find. And everyone that knocks on a particular door, it shall be open unto him. Everyone, not some, but every. That means that every one of us is entitled to a response if we can engage the mystery of specific demands. And that is why you and I must ensure that we detail in clear terms what it is that we are standing on the altar of prayer for. You are taking and engaging with any one of the intercessory guidelines ensure you can picture the answer you are praying for. Begin to look at what is it I desire from this prayer point to see happen. I'm praying for the church to multiply. Begin to let your mind begin to see what the answer looks like. Be specific in your demands. And then God begins to deliver supernaturally. I see that becoming our experience in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you rise on your feet with me this morning? Lift your hand before God and receive grace. Lord, I receive grace this morning to engage effectively as I pray specifically this week, I receive grace to engage effectively as I pray specifically this week. He said, everyone that asked, everyone that is specific in his demand shall receive an answer. Lord, I receive grace to engage effectively as I pray specifically on every item of prayer this week. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Make sure you are calling upon God. Lord, this week, no disconnected prayers, but specific prayers. Every time I stand on the altar of prayer, Lord, I receive grace. 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 Make sure you are praying from the depth of your heart. Make sure you are praying from the depth of your heart. Make sure you are calling upon the name of the Lord and receiving grace to engage effectively this week as we come to the conclusion of this season of prayer and fasting. Because at the end it shall speak. The answer must show in this last season. The answer must show in this last portion. The answer must show forth in this last session. In the name of Jesus Christ. In this week, there must be unique delivery. There must be supernatural manifestation. I receive grace, O oh Lord, for effective engagement in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. And blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. As you have prayed today, God's grace is made available for you. On the altar of prayer, you will receive specific answers. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. So shall it be. Today represents the third day in our fifth module of this season of prayer and fasting. And um, also entering the last week. And the Bible tells us very clearly, on the third day, what will he do? He will raise us up. So ensure that you position yourself for an encounter with God. And God himself will visit you supernaturally. And this being the last week, the Bible says at the end he shall speak. So for you this week, you will hear specific answers. There will be responses from heaven on your behalf. Every long-standing issue will turn for a testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For you, it shall be your week of answers. It shall be your week of answers. It shall be your week of answers. In the name of Jesus. Now speak to the day. Make your decree concerning the day. And speak to the week. Make your decree specifically. Specifically. Make your decree. Make your decree right now. Make your declaration. Make your declaration. Make your declaration. Speak right now to the week. Speak right now. To the week. Speak right now. This week is blessed. Open for encounters. Open for visitations. Open for transformative experiences. Open for answers from heaven. In the name of Jesus. A loaded week. A testimony week. A breakthrough week. An open door week. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed as you have declared so shall it be unto you in jesus precious name don't forget we are gathered this evening again across all of our zones 6 p.m is the time and to be a glorious time in his presence in jesus precious name let us share the goodness of the lord together surely god's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever Amen. Peace. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Then expect turnaround to become your new identity from henceforth. Amen and amen. You are blessed. Congratulate somebody as you go.